My name is Steve. For the May August 2024 exam, and the Cohen case is called Flat Tall Company. Now, Flat Tall Company operates in the purpose built student accommodation industry, very similar like the real estate industry. Now, so firstly, we are given the pre scene information by CGM or CIMA from the introduction and post-school education in Thailand, which is a fake country as always, and also introduction of the student accommodation okay, in this industry, and then introducing our company called Flattal, including the building operations and so on, including the news report and the extract from a student's blog. Right, so what I would do is that firstly, I've summarized all of these bits and pieces into my pre scene application notes. It's approximately more than 200 pages. Now, not only in the chapter one, I will be going through the pre scene material in depth, okay? So I will perform the in depth analysis for that. But also, I will take you through to the E2, F2, and P2 syllabus. But more importantly, according to the current CIMA MCS exam, it's important to recognize the fact that CIMA will require students to answer such I can questions. So this is why these questions will be divided into many core activity areas, including the area A, including these five sections, for example, the uh, capital investment up to WAC, and the activity B area, including the senior management decisions, so for example, the project management, including the chapter five, we're going to be managing performance and costs to help value creation, and also meshing performance and managing internal and external stakeholders, covering the whole syllabus. Now, what I would do is that firstly, I would take you through to the summary of the precinct information. And then after that, I will be having the in-depth analysis for the precinct case. And then finally, I will be linking those through to the syllabus from the E2, F2, and P2 in your study. Now, firstly, let's have a go at the flat tour complete introduction, okay, from the CIMA precinct. This is a public listed company and operates 174 residential buildings, of, of course located in Towson City, so his home country. The country is called Thailand. Fake country name is used to avoid political issues. Now, uh, we've got flats okay, inside these buildings and rent it to the full-time students. The currency is a fake currency, it's called the T dollars and following the IFRS when preparing for the account. Of course, we will be seeing lots of IFRS application in due course. And you are the financial manager and responsible for management accounting, reporting to the senior financial manager who will ultimately report to the finance director. Now, firstly, what I would do next, I would like to summarize all these bits and pieces into my pre scene application there. Because the idea for that is, when you are writing your answer on the exam date, seeing the unseen information, it's important that you have a mindset that you can recap from what you've read through from the pre scene. Now, firstly, public listed companies with different apartments or flats there, the currency being the T dollars, complying with the accounting standards, your role is the manager reporting to uh, Susanna, okay, who is the senior financial manager. Now, what I would do next is to have a go at the in-depth analysis okay, uh, of the pre scene case. It's important that you understand a bit more about this industry before you move any further. Now, the first thing I would like you to know is that there will be a lot of real life similar companies to the flat hall company. So, for example, the United Student listed in the UK, it is the largest provider of the student accommodation in the UK. And of course, 
the shareholders in the United States would be the institutional investors most likely because they will be providing a lot of fund to support the companies to build the buildings and divide it into different flats to accommodate students. Of course, this industry is more likely to be the capital intensive industry. Now, in terms of how we can satisfy the shareholders in terms of the dividend policy, that the United students would usually adopt the sustainable and progressive dividend policy. Now, this means that it will certainly distribute a proportion of its earnings to the shareholders. So, for example, yes, our earnings will be, let's say, $100, and maybe distributing, for example, 20% back to the institutional investors. Okay, so this is the way that how it works. Another company is called American Campus Communities Company, listed in the United States of America onto the New York Stock Exchange. However, in 2022, this company was bought or acquired by the Blackstone Company, which is a famous company there. And of course, it operates a wide range of on-campus and off-campus student housing, so emphasizes academic success and community engagement. Now, the shareholders involved in such uh, companies, so for example, the American campus communities, would be by, again, institutional investors and mutual fund. And of course, very likely that our company will be also owned by the institutional investors as well. Now, the dividend policy okay, of the American campus communities would be to provide dividend aligned with the fund from operation target. Now, uh, we introduced the FFO target here. So what it means is that when we are thinking about how much dividends to be distributed back to the shareholders, we need to look at our performance. Of course, traditionally, for most companies, their performance will be measured as the profit, for example, the net profit. However, in this industry, quite often, the profit needs to be adjusted further. So, for example, we take the net profit and to plot the depreciation expenses back and to plot the amortization expenses back. And more importantly, we'll need to exclude those one-off stuff. Now, the one-off stuff, usually in this industry, will be to sell our property to third parties. So we may be making additional gains or suffering from losses. We need to exclude them in the FFO calculation because we deem that this is not sustainable in most circumstances. So you need to know a bit more about this, okay, when you are setting up, so for example, a target KPIs and so on. And of course, when you are considering the balance scorecards, specifically in this paper, so uh, uh, from your syllabus, and make sure that you're ready for that. Now, another company, very famous company, is called the GCP Student Living PLC. It's a company listed in the UK onto the London Stock Exchange. However, this company operates as the investment trusts, but uh, technically speaking, it's called Real Estate Investment Trusts. So if you bring the first letter all together, the R E I T, or we can call it as the rate. And of course, the investors for rate companies. Of course, the rate companies here, the GCP, is the public listed company similar to other public listed companies. However, with minor differences in terms of particularly for dividend policy. Because for the rate company, for the retail investors, which means the uh, individual shareholders or individual investors, I can buy shares in such companies and I can I mean, inputs my money in buying shares and the company will be using my money and to invest in other property projects. And after that, the company needs to distribute back the dividend 
to the retail investors, for example. And of course, in some of the market, the dividend policy will be approximately 90% of its profit needs to, needs to be distributed back to the shareholders. So this will be a very, very uh, complicated and a very, very special company uh, type that you may be aware of. So for example, the major shareholders, again for the GCP, again will be the institutional investors, and a mix of that will also include the retail investors and also the investment trusts. And of course, fixing the dividend policy, so for example, to uh, certain targets, for example, 90% of the, uh, the FFO or the funds from operations and something like that, it will really depend on uh, the company's policy and the uh, jurisdictions that it operates in. Now, another thing I would like you to know is that in this industry, a few key ratios that will be very important to assess whether or not the company is successful. So for example, the occupancy rate. So for example, we've got, let's say, 10 rooms and we occupied, let's say, nine of that. So more likely that in this industry, your target would be at least 95% of the occupancy rate. Okay, so otherwise it will not be quite successful there. Another one will be the net operating income margin. So when we are calculating the numerator, we are not going to be taking the operating profit, but we will be excluding the finance cost in terms of that. Because in this industry, as you can see, later on in our company's financial statements, which means the flat tour company, so we can see that finance costs accounted for huge amounts of proportion. Uh, of the uh, of the profits that you operate, and this is why about excluding that because we understand that taking on additional debt will be very important in this industry. So we will be targeting at least sixty percent of the margin there. Now, another ratio is the loan to value ratio. So which means we are, so for example, in this industry, we're always thinking about raising finance. Of course, I will tell you exactly how in a second. But uh, just to give you a flavour, is that a lot of companies in this industry will be targeting the long-term debt finance. So this is why we will need this ratio in particular when we are arranging debt through the bank. And of course, the bankers would certainly keep an eye on to this ratio before lending us money. So we take the total debt in the numerator. However, in the denominator, we take the value of our property. So which means at the time that we apply the loan from the bank, we'll need to assess the fair value of our property and we put that into the denominator. Now this ratio, of course, the range will be around about 50% and something like that. And of course, if uh, I were to say that if the ratio is quite high, so this means that we are taking on additional debt Whereas the value in the denominator will be quite low for our property, I would say that it will be quite risky for us to operate uh, in such a scheme or to apply the loan from the bank like that. It's very unlikely that we may be getting a loan from the bank. And therefore, when you are managing the long-term debt finance, there's no point in simply saying that, OK, I want the long-term debt, I want to fix the interest rate. However, you're not keeping an eye on to the LTV ratio, which means the loan-to-value ratio in this industry. There's no point in doing that at all. Now, another ratio is the yield on cost. So what we can do is we take the profit excluding the finance and also the one-off stuff and to divide this into the total cost of investment in building your buildings, okay, building the flats and apartments and something like that. So usually we target to be six to eight percent. It's just to be the income, okay, from your investment or the alternative measure to ROI in this industry. Now, in terms of interest cover, of course, uh, very, very similar to other uh, industry companies, around about two, we take the profit before interest and tax and divide this into the interest expense. And of course, the higher the ratio, the higher the profitability of the company, so we can be having more abilities to take on additional debt. Another ratio is the cap rate, okay, or we can call it as the capitalization rate, 
Now, the count rates, number six there, is very similar to the number three. Now, for example, when we are looking at the denominator, in number three, we call it the value of property portfolio, but here is the current market value of the property. Now, the difference between these two, I would say that very likely that they are very similar to each other. However, minor differences would be when we are calculating a cap rate, unlike in the LTV ratio to determining uh, the denominator in the number three calculation, we use the value of our property on the date when we apply the loan. However, the denominator in the number six calculation here, we are using the market value of our property today, okay, rather than the date that we apply the loan from the bank. And of course, the number six, the cap rates there would be, for example, in the primary market, it's about four to six percent, but in the secondary market, it can be a lot higher. The cap rate really reflects the investment return. So, for example, uh, in stable and low risk market, the rate would be a lot lower than the market where the rate is a lot higher. So make sure that don't be surprised on the exam date. So for example, from the unseen material that the examining team is giving you the cap rate and asking you about the investment decisions, you need to know that if the rate is so high in this market, generally speaking, that this market property prices, yes, quite risky. So you need to tell the examining team about that. In terms of the return on equity, targeting about 8 to 12 percent in this industry so make sure that you're ready for that now when we are managing the finance part okay uh, in this industry so all we need to do is that firstly we need to keep our occupancy rates high at the same time to diversify our revenue not just relying on a single revenue stream so very important though is that we set rental prices based on the market demand location and property amenities. So for example, whether or not you can get access to the uh, internet, Wi-Fi, and so on. So we may be using very flexible and dynamic or changing pricing models to accommodate the market demand. At the same time, we also need to think about to keep our operating expenses as low as possible. We are not simply minimizing our operating expenses because it will be quite difficult for you to do that in this industry. But um, having a clearer way to manage your operating expense without compromising the quality that affecting the student's experience would be the key. Of course, capital expenditure, we need to be very careful on that. Of course, in a previous ratios calculation, the return on investment approach will be very likely to be applied. The debt management, yes, we look at the uh, LTV ratio to loan to value ratio, for example, and making sure we keep our liquidity properly, otherwise running out of cash and the business will fail. Now, what we're going to do then is that when understanding this industry in a bit more detail, we need to look at other real-life companies. For example, the United Student Listed Company in the UK. Now, what they would do is that they adopt the structure, the adapting to the local market, which means the divisional structure. And same applies to another company called GSA. So when thinking about the flat tool company, when we are expanding overseas, perhaps like the second company, which is the GSA, uh, in the future, I would recommend the examining team that we may be operating as the profit center and that will work the best. However, don't get me wrong, the profit center, my conclusion is only based on the current pre seed material, but on the exam date that where you are given the unseen uh, case background and additional information. So if we were to 
being responsible for the investment decisions as well. So for example, uh, where to build our property and so on. So operating as the investment center using, so for example, criteria like the economic value added, return on investment, residual income. So to monitor the performance will be also very key there as well. Now, um, I would say that operating in this industry, we may be facing a few risks so in particular, applicable to this industry, firstly, is the demand fluctuations. So for example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of countries, yes, it's locked down. And of course, a lot of students cannot go into the universities overseas. Okay, so for example, you can think about the Chinese students. Yes, they can't go abroad, for example. Now, of course, if they can't go abroad, they cannot leave or book a room or rent the flat in our company with the flat hall. So if that's the case then, what we could do instead, for example, for the United students in the UK at that particular moment in time, they've implemented very flexible leasing options, okay, to accommodate the uncertain academic schedules and travel plans of students. So instead of simply having the fixed plan that we allow students to rent the flats on a long-term basis, why not to charge them on a daily basis and something like that? Now, another risk would be the regulatory and compliance risk that we may be facing. So, for example, uh, the company, American Campus Community, is the company listed in the United States of America. I just told you about that. And of course, yes, in the past, that the US government changed the laws and regulations on that. And therefore, this company has to manage the complex local and federal regulations. So in terms of the building code, the code is like the regulation implemented by the US government and also implementing additional safety standards to make sure the health and safety issues that needs to be managed there. This could be one of the background unseen question on the exam date. Now, the company could do is to establish a dedicated compliance department to make sure to identify those risks and to manage those risks properly. And of course, yes, meeting with the standards in putting a lot of uh, more resources in like the project management and in putting your cash in to make sure that all of your buildings, yes, and flats are complying with the requirements set by the law will be absolutely key there. Another risk that this company may be facing will be the interest rate risk. So in terms of interest rate, yes, it's important there. So an example, yes, I take an example from previous companies called the GCP, it's the race company. Now, the race complete at that particular moment in time, the facing risk of rising interest rate. Now, if the interest rate is rising, these companies operating this industry normally takes on a lot of debt. So if the interest rate rises, they'll have to pay additional debt if we take on variable interest rate debt. So what company could do instead would be to, okay, if we are afraid that interest rate in the future may be rising, we may be thinking about to take on the fixed rate debt for a longer period instead. At the same time, we also need to keep an eye on to the loan to value ratio, okay, it's the LTV, to make sure that this ratio is not particularly high enough so we can get finance or get debt finance from the bank instead. Now, so um, this is how we apply the in-depth analysis into the case. Now, before we move on to the second uh, of our paragraph in the pre material and having the summary and then applying to, uh, having the in-depth analysis applying to the pre what I would do is I'll like to take you through to my pre application notes that is very important that you understand the syllabus knowledge, but trust me that 
uh, because I've been teaching the MCS since 2016, okay? Uh, it's, a, it's the second year, the first MCS exam came into being. Uh, up until now, yes, I've used a very effective approach to teach students to minimize their input and to maximize their output in terms of the scores that they can get. I've also trained many students uh, in the MCS and the SCS exam and including the OCS exam having the winning the prizes from SIMA, okay, it's the top five and top ten, the first prize winners, particularly in China. Now, very important area here is that you will need to focus on different core activity area, okay, from SIMA, which means from your syllabus. So let's have a go at this section one in my note. Now, what I would do is that firstly, you need to answer these questions set by SIMA, which means I can do something there. So I would divide all these questions, split that into five sections in my note. Firstly, I'd like to tell you that when we are appraising our investment, we can adopt the framework that uh, I developed for you, okay? Now, what I would do is that I will also apply these frameworks, firstly, to the past exams. Now, past exams, I've taken past exams, so for example, from 2021, let's say the trainer company, from which variant and in which question, uh, and then telling you about the question, so for example, explain the challenges in determining the project. So the answer plan, okay, I summarize it for you because I will find that there will be a lot of questions that you need to read, okay, if you're not using my materials. Studying the past exams will be very important there, but you will need to spend a lot of time in doing that. But uh, I'll just summarize all of these bits and pieces for you, so it will be very convenient for you to pass this exam very easily. But at the same time, not only I summarize all the uh, very similar questions related to this topic, but what I will also apply to the current case, which is the flat tour company. I'd like to give you a bit of background information of how this topic may come up. For example, the potential investment project may be coming up. So let's say that we develop a new PBSA, which means this industry complex. Now, or perhaps we like to upgrade our existing technology in our properties and so on. And also, I'll tell you a bit more about the potential digital transformation projects applicable to this, to this company as well. And the key considerations do always need to bear in mind. So my question uh, approach when teaching the MCS will be very effective there. Now, the way I would like to help with your MCS exam success will be firstly, I would like to take you through to the very in-depth pre scene analysis. Now, remember, we are not simply reading the pre scene information bit by bit, or we are not simply summarizing the pre scene information into bullet point to you, because there's no point in doing that at all, because it will be very flexible uh, on the exam day, as you can see in the past exam, that the unseen background information will be touching some of the points that did not exist in the pre scene that given by SIMA. So very importantly, you need to have an in-depth pre scene analysis there. So not only for that, I would like to rewrite all the syllabus knowledge and answering all the I can questions tailored to the flat hall company for the current case. That will be very, very important there. Not only for that, I would like to tip questions in a separate pack as well with my lectures, okay, with my lectures debriefing the pre and syllabus and together with our mock exam and also the tutor support. And of course, I'm sure that you will benefit from my approach to study the MCS and knowing a bit more about the background information and the industry information as well. I'm always here to help. Now finally, just a brief introduction of myself, the fellow member of ACCA and the member of ICAW and also I'm the member of SIMA as well. Uh, I've sat the previous T4 case studies many years ago 
and I've been teaching the SIMA qualification since 2015 and for the MCS from 2016 up until now. And I'm sure that my approach would be to minimize the time that you will spend in studying the MCS, but I will be maximizing the scores that you will get in this exam. Right, I'm going to be stopping the first recording now, and I look forward to seeing you in the future studies. Bye-bye. A-P-C, accounting for your future.